That's a spicy bowling shoe. Ginger Runner. What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner, here for another Ginger Runner review. It is day three of review week, where each day, Monday through Friday, I'm reviewing a new pair of shoes. Today is no different. The last couple of days, I've been doing trail shoes, and ooh, baby, look at what we're reviewing today. I've been running in it for a while. I thought it was time to actually give it the solid review. From Nike, it is the Pegasus 35 Turbo. Turbo! Look at these sneaky little fashion happy bowling shoes making an appearance on the Ginger Runner channel. Yes, I don't just review trail shoes. Sometimes I like to throw a road shoe in there for good measure. The Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo is a spicy hot number. But let's talk about Nike shoes in general for a moment. Whenever I review them, the first thing I think about is what is the marketing budget and how big is the hype train? It seems inevitable any new Nike product gets both of those. The Peggy 35 Turbo is no exception. The marketing budget and the hype were insane on this shoe. Not quite 4% levels, but pretty damn close. So I always have this high level of skepticism anytime I drop my feet into a Nike shoe just thinking, oh, man, how much of it is hype? How much is the shoe actually going to live up to all the expectations? Perfect example, the Zoom Fly, which I reviewed quite a while ago and uh, didn't like at all. Can't believe I still have you. But the 4% and Epic React from Nike were a little bit more on point and the justified. The Peggy 35 Turbo is an interesting shoe. If the Peggy 35, Epic React, and 4% had a crazy sloppy three-way, this could very well be the accidental offspring that we all wanted. Part 4% midsole, part React midsole, a little bit of Peggy in the upper, and throughout the Peggy 35 Turbo, does it work? Well, right now it is one of my go-to grabs for daily training when a quick clip is in order. I really like it. Sort of. As with all of my reviews, I like to talk about the things I like and dislike about a shoe. The Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo will get the same treatment, starting as always with things that I like. The cushion. The recipe of 4% and React is a tasty treat for my feet. One thing I really liked is that I get a lot of initial cushion out of the shoe for those first few miles while you're running, your body's warming up. The shoe is comfortable and accommodating. And as you want to pick up the pace, the shoe begins to balance out. The lower stack height of the forefoot definitely helps to keep that pace elevated. The cushion is soft while remaining springy. I'm really loving the combo. Uh, I didn't expect to as much as I do. It's not quite as fully cushioned as the Epic React or the Pegasus, but it's a balanced take for runners of all abilities. You're not gonna feel like a poser trying to run on a shoe that only is reserved for the elites. Now with 60 plus miles in them, my experience hasn't changed. I still really like them. I still pull them out for my workouts, for my longer training runs, my mid distance, uh, it's great. All aboard the hype train, whoop, whoop, fit. So this is what I would call a forgiving precision fit. It's not as accommodating as wider options for those of you who have feet that like a lot of toe splay. It's not gonna be up your alley, but it does give you just enough fit here in the forefoot for a little bit of breathability. Really nice midfoot lockdown with the fly wire, decent ankle lock with the additional padding, despite the fact that the ankle comes off the Achilles. I was expecting it to be a little bit looser back there, but overall, it's been great. Solid fit with a bit more precision. Great for speed work. And finally, design. So I gotta give it to Nike. Obviously, they've got more money than any of us. They're able to try new things. They're able to push their design department to create new technologies. We get it. What I want to comment on is the fact that they had success with the 4% midsole. They had success with the Epic React. So why not try to combine those two things, see what comes out. I'm actually happy with the combination. It's a nice balance of cushion and springiness, not to mention the visual design elements. For me, all of it tends to work. I'm having a blast in them, and I think their design is stirring the shoe pot right now, and I'm a fan of that. But that is not to say that the shoe is all back rubs and outer pops. There are some things that are bugging me about the Pegasus 35 Turbo. First and foremost, price, $180. Let's not go down this road with price. Obviously, that's a lot of money. I know that the 4% was more than that. I know that the Vapor Fly was also very expensive. The Zoom Fly was very expensive. I, I mean, honestly, how much does it cost to create this midsole? It cannot be that much. But I guess all the money that they're spending on marketing for the shoes has to come from somewhere. So why not us? 180 bucks. The drop, 10 millimeter drop, heel to toe. I think that's a bit too much for my feet. 18 millimeter stack height here in the front. I think that's about right. Anywhere between 22 and 24 for the heel would be nice, but the fact that it's 28 gives you a bit of a ramp. You're gonna feel your heel striking, rubbing from time to time. This little elfin slipper-like point here at the heel, it was actually designed to help your heel roll that foot forward more accurately, giving you a more stable foot strike. The problem is that I love to strike more midfoot to forefoot, so having so much stack height in the heel actually causes me some annoyance. Breathability, this is something I noticed with the shoe pretty much initially. Uh, the upper is built 
built up. You got multiple layers of mesh, not only this fine mesh on the outsole, it's kind of this plastic material, but a softer mesh on the inside. The layers combine for a reduced airflow, causing breathability issues. It's not as bad as other shoes that I've worn in the past, but the reality is in hot weather, hot summer climates, like right now, my feet get hot, they get wet. This shoe keeps it all in. So breathability for me is a bit of a negative. And finally, durability. This shoe at $180 should be lasting you for hundreds of miles. Again, uh, just around 60 miles. I don't see getting much more than another hundred out of the shoe, which makes this a shoe that costs more than a dollar per mile. I mean, come on, donuts are cheaper than that. Where I'm noticing the most wear is really on the outsole and midsole materials. The exposed foam here under the midfoot, it's getting a lot of wear. The pentagonal rubber nubs under the heel is also getting some strike. So I do anticipate this shoe wearing down earlier than you would like it because it is going to be comfortable. You're going to want it to last forever. It's just not going to do it. It's just so expensive. So that's pretty much it for likes and dislikes. But in conclusion, let's get a little bit more specific, starting, of course, with build quality. So far, so good. Obviously, the durability is going to be an issue. But the seams, the materials, the design, I think the build quality is pretty spot on in the shoe. I'm having a lot of fun with it because of that foam combination. It's neat. Comfort. This is the strongest case for the Peggy 35 Turbo. It is a very comfortable shoe. You're going to get softness. You're going to get precision through the fit. You're going to get a springy bounciness that helps you pick that cadence up without so much stiffness that it's just causing issues. So I have enjoyed my time comfortably in the Peggy 35 Turbo fit. Again, I like it a lot. It's that precision fit, feeling a bit like a second skin on your feet. You're not getting a ton of room or movement up there. But for those workout days, those long training runs, I do like it a lot. Be aware that the toe box is a bit flattened, a bit narrow. So if you do have big toenails or a big, thick, big toe, you'll notice rubbing along the top of the upper that will eventually begin to break in as the midsole breaks down. Price at $180? That is expensive. And finally, looks. Always subjective. If you like a good bowling stripe and you like it to be bright and fluorescent, you like the shoe. To me, that's obviously the most dramatic design element of the shoe. It definitely helps stand it out against the competition. But otherwise, the design of the shoe is pretty smart. Really soft teal blue mixed with white and the bright pink. Uh, the other colorway is much more simple. But uh, overall, I like the look of the shoe a lot. That stripe's growing on me. Bringing us to our final criteria is the Peggy 35 Turbo a buy, try, or a why? I'm giving this a solid buy try. If you need a mid-distance comfy racer, this is a sweet pickup. But you better start collecting your coins in a swear jar because f And that, my friends, is it for my review of the Peggy 35 Turbo. I am really curious what you think of this shoe. So in the comments below, let me know if you've run in the shoe, what your thoughts are on it. I know that there's lots of varying opinions on it. I'm curious to hear yours. If you would like to buy a pair or want more information, of course, there are links in this description to Running Warehouse, which not only helps this channel, but it also helps you. So head on over and check it out. If you like this review, make sure you like, favorite, and subscribe to the channel and click the little notification bell as well. We're doing new reviews every day this week. The next two days should be really fun. And social media links, there's a couple of those there. If you would like to help continue to support this channel, keep the lights on, the mic's hot, patreon.com slash the ginger runner for as little as a dollar a month. You get cool perks on the back end. It's a great crew of people, very, very supportive. Consider it. Now, I hope you're getting out there training hard, racing harder, and parting the hardest. I know I am. We'll see you guys tomorrow. A turbo!